Oh, oh, hey there. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I didn't know my camera was recording. I was just beating my earnings expectations. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, Financial Trading Basics Part 19, Big Beats. If you've watched since earnings season, if you turn on CNBC, one word that will jump out at you is beat. Beat my earnings expectations. If you had a different word in mind, you just prove that context defines a variable. And when people don't know what they're talking about, they talk about sex. <laughs> um, with this episode, I want to talk about trading, the economics and trading of just big board stocks, FANG, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, I think that's, that's what FANG is. Um, just companies that are more mature in the marketplace, you know, they've been reporting for 5, 10, 15 years, everyone in the public knows them, or they, you know, they're very big companies. Um, just ideas to trade them, and then as well as some more thoughts on commodity, commodity and currency trading, um, and then just we'll start with some economics to just to have some ideas in our head. Uh, let's ask a question. How big can a company get? Let's assume, just forgetting any political or any, any practical considerations, let's, uh, let's c consider a society with literally one company. Private company, people make money on it. Um, how big could that company get? Uh, and again, don't have a dollar figure. It's a, it's a thought experiment. But the point is, is there still a limit, right? If, if every single person in a given populace um, can only buy from one company, the company's still profitability is going to maximize as a function of the consumer behavior. Um, and now obviously that's, you know, there's not, we are not going to live in an environment with one company. So how much can a company grow today? Um, and we're going to say that consumer behavior creates demand and consumers determine value through sentiment. Um, and I also, if you said, Brad, what is, if you had to say, what is the most, you know, prioritized or driving factor of any given uh, economy, I would say consumer behavior. And so very, very simply, logically, there's, all, there, there's a maximum to the size any company could grow to, again, as a function of the GDP. Um, to me, GDP, gross domestic product, um, ours. I think 2019 on the internet was about 90 trillion. And the way I economically look at that number, consumers were willing to spend 90 trillion dollars on experience, on goods, on services, on things. So I view GDP as a reflection of consumer sentiment and consumer behavior. Um, so let's again try to define sentiment time frames or just consider sentiment, how sentiment changes. Right? There's, there's a maximum to how big a company can get. There's also a maximum lifespan of a person. Right? It's certainly less than 100, about 120 years. So how many generations does an individual meet and how do you, how did you determine your values? Was well, your family or your environment, you know, your friend group or your school or you know your work environment but how many generations uh you know fa familial generations does an individual meet right a lot of very few people like most people probably meet their grandparents some people their great grandparents pretty few their great great grandparents um so there's you know you know maybe at six or seven generations at the maximum ever present at a given family um, and again, because of technology specific to our environment, um, it, your, your family's not that relevant in terms of determining your value structure as you get older or just as you're connected through the internet. Um, and so like I said, this, this stuff will all consolidate to some degree, right? We still have political debates. We still have people that genuinely disagree on some things. Um, and that's a function of education. Um, so as the education increases, the sentiment of any given species will consolidate to some degree, not completely, not close to completely, but more so than it is today. And again, remember, we're at a novel state of technological growth, absolutely for sure. We're at a, you know, 7.8 billion people, um, again, just using 
our boy Bill Gates, Kermit the Frog's number, for whatever they say about 10 billion is they're thinking about the plateau. So we'll just assume that's the about the number, right? You're still looking at a, shit, I don't, I don't know, 10, 30, 40% you know, increase in the population. So GDP will, again, for sure go up because of population, for sure go up because of innovation, for sure go up because of decreased inefficiency. So those are the questions in economics that I just wanted you to have in your head. Um, and the, the point I wanted to make, again, like we can go prove a bunch of things in physics, no problem. This is not proven in economics because, again, the data will be the data in the future. Um, and again, I, I can't even seriously put real time frames on anything. Um, but my overall point is sentiment changes over generations not lifetimes, and even more so than generations, it changes at the species level once technology is integrated to a sufficient level, which we certainly have. So now, now we'll talk about, again, a couple of trades for big, big beats on the, uh, on the big board stocks, and then some more thoughts on commodity and currency trading from a couple of videos ago. So again, just Ballpark number, total asset value, real estate, cash accounts, any anything about five quadrillion dollars could certainly be different pretty substantially. Um, but right, how about Apple has the highest market capitalization? Market capitalization is share price times share shares outstanding. Um, but Apple has a market cap of about 2.26 trillion dollars. Um, the global, I think the global equities market exchange is again about 500 billion to, a, to 800 billion a day. Currency markets exchange at about four to five trillion dollars a day. So, again, an example of one company, you know, how long did it take to make Apple? You have to operate a business, um, and then the currency market's going to exchange two, two apples worth of value every single day. So, that's a good, you know. Uh, forex markets are, or currency markets are the most liquid financial markets that exist. Um, but those are just some, again, some reference numbers as to why, again, I think commodity, commodity and currency trading would be very good. Additionally, or how to trade them, again, I've not taken these trades, I've, well, I want to, um, I just haven't done enough research, or I haven't found a good trade prospectus, um, and I haven't really looked for one. Um, but determine a country's imports and exports and their trading partners. Then deter also determine overall political, political and regulatory environment. Right? As, as the sentiment of the species consolidates, right, we're not, we're not going to go back to like, I don't think socialism ever existed in any real meaningful way, but you're not going to go back to like the Soviet Union. Um, so the predictability of general trends should be, again, just reflective of the sentiment. Now, forget, like, morals or, like, values, right? Just like an underdeveloped country, they're certainly going to have increased electricity or water or just the, the stuff that a developed country has. So, find those countries, find their imports and exports, find countries that they trade with, and then, and then find the regulatory environment where again, you should have some clear variability to, you know, this thing should go down because this country is selling less hay barrels, less chips, sh supply chip shortage. There should be some way to play that with commodity and currency right now. Again, I just don't know the industry. And you have to do a lot of research, to, again, to have a good trade perspective. Um, and then also understand logistics chains and current events, right? We talked about the evergreen, but or when we talk about trading the big boards or trading a, a, an equity, we talk about a volatility event. And now for the earnings reports, right, the, you know, Apple or Facebook comes out and they crush earnings like they're all doing right now. Why doesn't a company, why doesn't the price per share have, have an immediate reaction? Why isn't it consistent? I don't know. I, I personally have no fucking clue. So that's why I wait for something to go, right, like Pinterest. Dropped 10% from the 70 to 60, I think. I mean, I didn't really look it up. But I wait for uh, a big reaction to, I would never put a trade on just because of earnings. Most, again, which, what, what earning event relates to what reaction in the stock price, I don't think it's consistent at all. Um, I don't think it's predictable. 
So certainly, again, not, not even, a, a, I would just look for a different trade thesis. Um, but I, I'm waiting for the volatility event, for the one company that beats earnings and actually increases 100% or something and then picks up momentum and then appreciates 400% the next day. Um, but I wait for the volatility event. And for commodity and currencies, the volatility events will be current events, just things in the news, logistics change, policy changes, Brexit, things with other, like in relationships with other trading partners, and, and again for the medium, like extended medium to long term, hundreds of years, thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, this stuff will certainly be going on. Um, and, and like again, go read a, uh, a, a, a a trading article or a newspaper release or a book from a hundred years ago about trading. They say the exact same shit about sentiment. So this process is, again will go on for a very long fucking time. Um, and then just another like for me personally, I would I would have had interest in because because of maturation of big board stocks. I would the, to me those have a lot of interest for um, ex medium to long term short positions. Because right, once you've appreciated, you have to keep the mo you have to keep like it, it, seriously beating expectations or seriously having some fundamental development. And because again, from simple analysis, we know there's some limit to how big a company can get. Um, a matured company that that finding a short uh, a short position for the medium term, ten years, twenty years, again. I think great, great opportunities. Again, I don't know if Pinterest would have been one of them or is one of them, because again, I don't, I can't predict the future like anybody else. Um, but again, just how exactly are, is industry going to change? Couldn't possibly tell you. Um, but again, that's where again just managing a trade comes into play. I take a certain amount of risk, you know, mitigated from a cash flow thing outside the market, from income outside the market, and then if the trade happens to go in my favor, add accordingly. Um, Right, the fundamental change is what you're going to do to wait for it to enter the trade, and then regardless of why you enter the trade, you're going to manage it a, a, as a limit of risk of you, you personally can tolerate. Um, but again, again, matured companies crashing to zero or at least seriously declining because of limits, just societal limits, to me it would be very good trades. Um, you just ha have to have a, a big, big... Uh, for for like shorting a bigger cap stock, I would just need want to have a lot more money in my account. Um, but that's what I wanted to say about currency and commodity trading, trading those big beats on on the uh, on the market. And the last is a couple points: cannabis regulation. We talked about regulation in the last episode. And as an example of uh, regulation being categorically good, right? If Cannabis comes out and gets legalized tomorrow, or the federal banking part passes the Senate. I think it already passed the House tomorrow. So it's categorically good for the industry of cannabis. So, all right, there's just there's just a random note from the last episode, and then a random term I wanted to end with was basis points. This is logically incorrect, all right? So I put one dollar into something, and it appreciates to three dollars. I have to turn 300%. If it goes to zero, I've decreased 100%. So you can't lose more than 100%, but you can gain more than 100%. And so that's a little math fact that I'm also thinking through, but to basis points. The reason it's wrong is because, right, one, your one dollar, that is your basis, literally cost basis on your trading app. But Right, if it you change, right? I just basis points. You change as a percentage of the basis. The basis does not change. That's why it's the basis. <laughs> um, logical economic thought. But those are my uh, thoughts for financial trading basics, part nineteen, big beats. And excuse my uh, inappropriate behavior at the beginning of this episode. I, I didn't know what you guys were thinking. Oh, thanks for watching.